Algebra word problems number 6D, simple interest as fractions. This is part four in our interest word problems for algebra. Remember, interest is the amount paid for the use of money. The amount of money borrowed is the principal. So if you have an amount in the bank, the bank will pay you that interest for letting you have the money in the bank because they're gonna use it. And then if you borrow money, then you need to pay them the interest for borrowing the money. The principal is that amount, that amount of money, the money either you have in the bank or the amount you borrowed. Simple interest is money paid or earned on a principal account. To find simple interest, we use the simple interest formula, I equals PRT, principal times rate times time. And that's when you see the variables next to each other, you know that means to multiply them, right? So Bob deposited $1,200 into a savings account that paid 4 and 3 fourths percent simple interest. How much interest will the bank pay him in one year? So think, how can we convert 4 and 3 fourths percent to a decimal so that we can do this and plug it into the formula? Well, if you remember from fourth and fifth grade, we turn it into an improper fraction, we multiply it by 1 over 100, and then we divide it. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19, and we put it over the original denominator of 4. We have 19 over 4. Part 2 is we multiply it by 1 over 100. 19 times 1 is 19. 4 times 100 is 400. This is a little division problem. Remember I always say? So 19 divided by 400, well, 400 can't go into 19. We know that, so we need to add a decimal point and a bunch of zeros to help it. Can 400 go into 19? Nope. We raise that decimal point over the bar. Can it go into 190? Nope. So we put a zero there because we need to put something between the next answer and the decimal point. Can it go into 1900? Yes, four times. It's 1600, and 19 minus 1600 is 300. We drop the next zero. Four goes, 400 goes into 3000 seven times because seven times 400 is 2800. We do our subtraction and get 200. Drop the last zero so we can put the 400 into it. We get a five. 400 goes into 2000. Five times, we do our subtraction, we get zero. Now that we're down to a zero, we know that the answer is 0 0.0475. We plug that into our formula, and we've got 1,200 times 0 0.0475 times the one year, okay? We do our multiplication, all right? And remember, when you're multiplying a big number like this, no calculators, that for each number that you multiply down here, that's the place value that you're going to put, start putting the answer in. If you start multiplying this one and fanning out, the answer starts here. If you start multiplying this one and you fan out to each one, the answer starts below it. For each place value that you multiply, the answer starts below that number, okay? So we finish multiplying the whole thing. We see that there's one, two, three, four hops over to the decimal point in the equation. So we go one, two, three, four hops over to, for the decimal point in the product. We end up with $57, or, you know, 57.00, $57 times the one year is $57 paid to him in one year. Oh. Emma borrowed X at three and a quarter percent for three years. What is the total she will pay back? So think, we need to convert the three and a quarter percent to a decimal just like we did in the other ones. We make an improper fraction, we multiply it by one over 100, and we do division, okay, three parts. So our improper fraction is three times four is 12, plus one is 13. It goes over the four, the original denominator. We multiply that by one over 100, that's part two. 13 times one is 13, four times 100 is 400. Now we have to do our little division problem, 13 divided by 400. And we know that would be very hard to do unless we added a decimal point and a bunch of zeros. We need to put the decimal point immediately above the bar. That's the first thing we do. And we say, can 400 fit into 130? Nope. So we put a zero up here. Can it fit into 1300? Yes. Times three, it's 1200. We put that down there and subtract and get 100, and we drop our next zero. Can 400 go into 1,000? Yeah, two times. It would be 800. We put that down and do our subtraction and get 200 right here. We drop our last zero. 400 goes into 2,000 five times. We do our subtraction and get zero, and we know that 3 and 1 fourth percent comes out to 0 0.0325. Okay? So what is it asking for? It's asking for the total she will pay back. So that means we need the total amount X and 
whatever the interest is, okay? So we know that the interest is 0 0.0325. We know that she did it for three years. So we need to multiply the 0 0.0325 times the three years, okay? And we do. 0 0.0325 times three comes out to 0 0.0975. We count one, two, three, four hops in the equation. So there's four hops in the product. And we've got 0 0.0975. Now we still need to multiply it by the principal, but that's x. So guess what? We're done. 0 0.0975x is our answer. Whatever the amount is, three and a quarter percent for three years times whatever amount is going to be what this is. Okay? So we're finished. 0 0.0975x is our answer. Not that bad, was it? So now you know how to stick a variable in for an interest formula, and you know how to change that sassy fractional percentage into a decimal place. Just remember there's three parts. Improper fraction, multiply it by 1 over 100, and then divide it. Okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.